welcome back to the channel. Coming up in this episode, highlights from around the verse with Chris Roberts and Sandy Gardner, featuring highlights from the Foundry 42 UK studio update with Phil Mella. Also, a look at how procedural moons are made. All this and more coming up in this episode. But first, let's go to the highlights from the Foundry 42 UK studio update. Now, first of all, Phil told us that they've been working, well, continuing to work on the new cockpit experience. Now, basically, uh, this is tied in with the uh, actor status system and also incorporates, um, well, things like blackouts and redouts, which can occur in the cockpit. They've also been improving the character animations as well. And also some continuing work on hand-to-hand -hand takedowns. Now the graphics team have been working on the render to texture tech and uh, this will be used on all the in-game display systems and also in the future it will be a holographic display system which might be used for live uh, video feeds between players. And the team have solved a problem with planets appearing too bright against the background of space. The graphics team have added a lot of new effects to the GPU particle system and these new effects will be seen in 3.0. Also been working on some Amon and Reese ship weapons and Klaus and Werner ship weapons both size 1 to 6 and from Genomai they've created a heavy machine gun with a powerful cooling system. Now Phil did tell us that they've been doing some R&D work on some massive procedurally generated cities and landing zones which will be seen in the game in the future. They've also been working on the uh, space to render text which improves the look of space and also improves the look of the asteroid field around Yella. Now Phil told us that the surface outposts have now been completed. And of course there's different varieties of outposts uh, which serve different functions like hydroponics and mining. Also Phil told us that the airlock doors have now switched to system 2.0. So make sure you've got your helmet on before you go outside. Now I must admit there's certainly been a increase in the degree of fidelity of these outposts since we saw them earlier in the year. Now Phil also told us that they've implemented the different companies logos on the outside of the outpost and also have uh, incorporated the look of the outpost into the moon and planetary environments with weathering effects as well. Also the new truck stop pubs are being worked on and they're working on a number of shops uh, for the hubs and also an admin office where you can drop off goods. They've also been working on an awesome observation area to view some uh, ships landing and taking off. They've also been adding admin offices to Port Olisar and Grim Hex and converting all the doors and airlocks to System 2.0. Also two new shops will be in Grim Hex. One of these is called Technoctic with a mysterious character lurking there. Now we got a closer look at the Moby Glass and how it will look in 3.0 and beyond. Now uh, this Moby Glass will also show a mini star map and uh, we got a look at that here and uh, as you can see this is going to be very convenient and uh, very awesome to look at uh, while you're uh, navigating your way through the stars. They've also wrapped up work on the new mission manager. You'll be able to keep track of all the missions you're doing and have completed in the game. Also we got a look at the new ship multifunctional displays and uh, well 
these look a lot better than what we've got in the game already bring a lot more functionality to your ships also we got a look at the new displays on the airlocks and I've also continued to work on the takedown mechanic and also test weapons for the upcoming 3.0 and also uh, perfecting a new jumping mechanic maybe there might be some long jump competitions in the verse also ongoing work on the cover and also on projecting the moby glass forward and combat ai stances so they've been doing additional animation work for the uh, characters for 3.0 and squadron 42 and the mission givers also some additional mocap has also been uh, done recently work is wrapped up on the derelict ships for 3.0 and you're going to be able to find a starfarer caterpillar constellation and freelancer uh, somewhere on the surface of these moons also they showed us the tool they use to uh, actually place these ships to make them look like they've uh, actually crashed there so we had a look at the whole sea and they showed us the animation for the unfolding of the cargo arms also they've been working on the inside of the whole sea now it's really going to be interesting to see what the inside of this ship turns out like looks very good already now phil also told us that work is underway on the aegis eclipse now we got a look at uh, work in progress for the cockpit here and they're also working on other aspects of the aegis eclipse as well now more excitingly phil told us that they've only got three rooms left for the final art for the reclaimer now they've been concentrating a lot on the cargo area maximizing the space now they've also been maximizing the space for the cockpit because it's quite tight but they've been using retractable screens uh, for the displays also they've finished the tractor beam uh, for the reclaimer and also the bridge lift was also shown and uh, this accesses to the lower decks well that's always an interesting studio update from foundry 42 in the uk especially that reclaimer also in around the verse was a fantastic segment on how the procedural moons are made now we saw the developers show us the tools they're using to create this groundbreaking procedurally generated technology for star citizen i know we've seen other procedurally generated games but i think you'll agree with me this is on an entirely different level now the developers told us that they've greatly improved this technology and uh, how they've managed now to uh, incorporate scattering of objects uh, to place um, well realistic uh, boulders uh, vegetation and uh, basically see these procedurally generated worlds they're creating in a naturally well looking way without looking like it's just been plonked down by someone well with a big hand seeding of these planets is actually so random that uh, when the developers explore these worlds they're actually uh, taken aback at the sites they actually find now at the end of the piece the developers showed us a uh, piece which demonstrated the visual breakdown of all the elements of the technology which goes into making these procedural moons
Now that was an amazing piece and uh, if you look very carefully when you watch it again you'll notice how the massive reclaimer ship actually uh, fades away into a small dot as you pull out further and further from the surface of the moon. Well, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please don't forget to like, and also, it will help the channel a lot and give me great encouragement to carry on doing these videos if you'd consider subscribing. So until next time, wherever you're watching, out in that big universe, you take care. And hopefully, I'll see you all sometime soon. Bye for now.